six feet. One, two, three, four, one.
Thank you. Thank you very much. That was Skating uh, by Vince Giraldi. That's played for the, um, uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Oh, those first three songs that you heard, uh, the first one was, of course, Christmas is Coming, um, which uh, was a great standard written for, that was written for that one. Um, Hark the Herald Angels Sing was, uh, we did our version of it, and Vince did a, a very, very similar version for the album, and that was just skating, which was composed uh, for that special as well. Um, my name is John Lang, and it's really my deep pleasure to present the concert of Vince Giraldi's uh, Merry Christmas Charlie Brown today to you. Um, I'd like to thank the library for hosting us today. It was really nice of them. And um, uh, uh, I'd like to introduce you guys to the, the musicians I have the honor of playing with today. On piano, please welcome Roberta Pickett. Great jazz pianist, very lucky to be here today. And uh, a drum legend, actually, Tom Lolito, who uh, was very well to be here today. Um, the music we're playing for you today is very special. Um, it seems to go more popular every year, which for jazz music is something of a miracle. <laughs> that doesn't really happen much. Um, and, and why is that? Uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of, I read a few articles online every year somebody writes um, something about the enduring nature of this music. And um, I think the, the individuality of this music emanates from the composer Vince Guaraldi. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about him personally later, but right now I'm just gonna talk about the music. Um, this is jazz music for sure, it's, which is a uniquely American phenomenon. And uh, the sounds in this collection have their roots in jazz, but like America, the elements are much more diverse than just jazz. Um, for example, uh, in a few of these numbers, and you just heard two great examples of this actually, Vince uses a one four five as a solo section. And this is not this is not from the jazz idiom at all. This is, has its roots in Afro-Cuban music, and, which Vince knew very well because he played in one of the great Afro-Cuban bands, the Cal Jader band in the early 50s. Um, and could, Roberta, could you play that one four five for them real quick? You hear that, and that's not a jazz thing. That doesn't have any roots in in, in jazz really as a, as a solo vehicle. That comes directly out of Latin music. And I think um, anyone who had Latino roots at that time um, would have picked up on this subconsciously. And I think that's one element that helps break through to a vast, vast audience. This, this music has an international audience. And similarly, um, with the trio swings quite a bit on the album. And, but you also hear other rhythms, not just Afro-Cuban rhythms, you hear uh, bossa nova quite a bit. Tom, could you give them a bossa nova beat? Sure. But obviously, uh, this is a Brazilian rhythm, comes from Brazil, and there was a huge bossa nova craze happening at the time that Vince, Vince composed this music, so we kind of capitalized on that too, and that helped its popularity. And it, a little bit, um, you know, like you don't hear swing constantly, you hear different rhythms in this music, and that's what, one thing gives us a vitality. Um, okay, um, the other thing at this time, you know, when, when this was produced, CBS TV produced this show, this Christmas special, Charlie Brown was very popular, and they could have called any jazz comp composer they wanted to. They could have called Miles Davis or Duke Ellington, and this Charles Mingus, for that example, could have been called for this. That would be interesting <laughs> to hear the Peanuts, the Peanuts version of uh, Charles Mingus. But anyway, um, but why, why did they choose Vince? And I think that one of the answers is this, this music has a sort of childlike simplicity. I don't mean it's simple or stupid or easy, but it has this beautiful simplicity in it, which, which is immediately recognizable to anybody who does it. And how is that possible? Um, Vince Guaraldi was very well steeped in American popular song. His uncles, two of his uncles ran two very popular dance bands in the Bay Area. He grew up listening, like from a very young age, listening and hanging out, listening to his music. So he knew American popular song back to front. And all these melodies are, are simple and memorable for a reason, because he you know, grew up with that idea, like if you went to a show, you had to be able to sing the melody by act, the intermission, you had to be able to sing all the melodies, it was, it was the idea. And so he had this in his head, and all these, these melodies are just beautiful and simple. And, uh, they have just a, a memorable quality. So anyway, we'd like to continue with the music. Um, we're gonna, I hope you enjoy our arrangement of O Tannenbaum, which uh, is definitely, and we're, we're doing this uh, concert, I think in a, in a way that Vince would have appreciated. We're definitely playing many of this, the melodies he had and his harmonies and his rhythms, but we're also giving it a little bit of our own um, 
interpretation, which he would have done. If he was here today, he, would have, he wouldn't have played these exactly like he did in the album, since the ethos of jazz is to kind of put your imprint on anything you do, and we're certainly doing that today. So we hope you enjoy our arrangement of Botanimal. Ooh, I gotta play. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do slow. Thank you. 
one on the album, uh, there's a real famous usage of a children's chorus on this. You mean, we don't have a chorus today. I failed to recruit a children's chorus, but uh, um, we will we'll hear the part if you know it well. It will be there, I promise.
thank you. That one featured the whole band. Um, okay. Yeah, this, this is the one, it's funny, this is a very, I guess you could say, uh, in a way, a very happy sounding album, because it's a children's album with a, um, you know, a very happy holiday message to it. There is, however, one just great recording. This is um, where it's just different. It, Greensleeves, he recorded Greensleeves, which of course is a Christmas classic, and I think it, legend is it was written by King Henry VIII Greensleeves. I don't know how true that could be, um, but, um, Anyway, it's a very traditional song. Um, if he does it, again, he imbues it with a lot of uh, jazzy things. And one thing he uses here is, this was written during the 60s, so this is the, the era of kind of Miles Davis and, and uh, modal playing. And I think this is affected by that quite a bit. So let's see if we can hear that. It's a lot of nice mystery to it. So here's uh, Vince's arrangement of green sleeves. Are you going to solo on this too? Um, I don't think there's time. But we'll see. Whatever, maybe. Maybe or if I did it, I think I would do two A's. Like the A section, then you could come with the middle. Come with yeah. okay. Here you see this is actually a jazz concert. <laughs> We're deciding exactly what to play for you guys. Um, uh,
which was kind of literally made to cash in on the bossa nova craze that was happening. And he, he made a, a recording of a famous bossa nova, and I think it was just Black Orpheus, or what we would call uh, Day in the Life of a Fool is the name of the actual song. But the B-side of that record was called, a song he wrote called Cast Your Fate to the Wind. And no one thought much of it, but a DJ started playing it, and people heard it and started calling in, and, it became a pretty mind, a pretty big hit, and um, it came. It was spent 19 weeks on the top 100 chart, and it peaked at number 22, which is a really unusual feat for a jazz instrumental, especially um, at that time. You know, the Beatles are hitting around this time. It's it's pretty much um, it's a, it's an anomaly almost. But he Garaldi ended up winning a Grammy for that record for just best jazz composition in, in 1962, and. Uh, Vince was a pretty humble guy. He, he was once quoted as saying, I don't think I'm a great piano player, but I would like to have people like me and to play uh, pretty tunes and reach the audience. I hope some of those tunes will become standards. I want to write standards, not just hits. So he, 
he was writing, you know, to be remembered. He was writing in a tradition he thought would be remembered, but he also wanted to be popular. Um, in 1963, uh, while searching for music to accompany a planned penis documentary called Avoiding Charlie Brown, television producer Lee Mendelson heard Cast Your Fate to the Wind on a radio station while driving across the Golden Gate Bridge, literally. Um, and from this, he, he loved the song and he contacted Ralph Gleason, who put him in touch with Vince Guaraldi, and he offered him a, the job on the phone immediately to, to be the composer for the Peanuts series. And Vince gladly accepted this because he thought it was a great opportunity. And so he, he hadn't, he actually, when he composed this music, the, he did do a boy named Charlie Brown first, and it was that that documentary never saw the light of day because it didn't really get. But they did have in the in the works that we're going to do this Christmas special. So they told him about it and they sent him some rushes and he started writing music immediately for that. So this mu this music was written for this purpose. It was um, he was definitely under a deadline and he definitely delivered. Um, and as we discussed, what makes it so special earlier um, is just sort of. Uh, it's an amazing combination of different things that all came together, and uh, we're lucky to have this music. Um, I'd like to continue on now with uh, his arrangement of the Christmas song. John. Uh, yeah, we have 10 minutes. So, so one, one. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. One, one line intro? Sure. Yeah, go ahead.
So uh, we can play, we're gonna play a quick Christmas time is here and then get you uh, to Linus and Lucy and then we'll get you guys on your way. So thank you very much for attending today. Uh, we really appreciate it and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. And there's an exhibit. Oh yes, and don't forget these wonderful photos by Joe Williams, who the artist is outside. I think he's supposed to, he was supposed to have a presentation here. I think they double filled it. So <laughs> take a look at the photos too if you can. They're wonderful. Um, Joe Williams is the photographer. Um, right on it? Yeah, just go one time through. One yeah, time through. Fine. Yeah. Um. One, two, three, a two, two, three. <laughs>